Okay, the kitchen is a mess. The baby is crying, but in here, let's look at what we have. Ta-da! Pranav! Pranav! Okay, I'm the only one who's excited about it at the moment, but that's okay. I can't believe we made this Holy in our- shite! I can't believe we made this in our- I can't believe we made this in our condo oven. So proud of you. Thank you, lovey. Even baby is happy. I mean, why is Mara Bachar Rora in the other room? That's okay, because this bread is a thing of beauty. Boy. Hi. The bread looks beautiful. Hi friends, welcome to my video. This week I'm gonna show you how I baked some bread. Not this specific loaf, although I did bake this loaf and I'm still kind of in shock that I produced something that looks like this in my condo kitchen. But I'm gonna show you how I made this olive loaf. Both recipes use similar ratios and I'm gonna take you through all the steps. I'm also gonna show you how I planned some of our meals for the coming days. It's a five-day meal plan featuring the olive loaf. It starts on a Saturday because that's when I have the most free time to spend in the kitchen with my latest obsession, which is bread making. When we entered our first lockdown back in March, I didn't jump on the bread making bandwagon, but this time around during our second lockdown, I am doing all the quarantine baking. This is a really easy loaf to make. Everything that you see right here, these are the ingredients, plus water. We're starting with some olives. I have 50-50 of manzanilla and kalamata, then a bit of salt, some black pepper, a bit of garlic powder, and of course, some quick rising yeast. There is nothing pretentious about these olives. Both varieties came out of a jar. I'm not even ashamed of that. These ingredients are the cheapest, most available ingredients. You can even get them in the dollar store. And this flour is just all-purpose flour. It's not even bread flour. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add all of our dry ingredients to a bowl and we're just gonna mix them up. You can use a whisk, you can use a fork, you could use a stand mixer if you have one. I don't have one. I'm just gonna be using whatever little power I have in my forearm and this bread whisk. Now let's say for whatever reason, you don't like olives and you don't wanna make an olive loaf, then just leave out the olives. You can also drop the garlic powder and black pepper and you'll just get a really nice white crusty loaf of bread. But if like me, you think olives are life, then this is the time to add the olives. Now these olives were strained, they were patted dry because I don't wanna add any extra liquid, like liquid from the jar because they did come out of a jar. So these olives, I tried to make them as dry as I possibly could. Then we're gonna add a bit of warm water, like really warm water, but not hot water. And I'm bringing this all together with the back of a spoon, like the handle of the spoon. I Not the back of the spoon, I meant the spoon handle, not the spoon part. You don't really have to work too hard at bringing this together. It's gonna form a shaggy kind of dough. I am using this dough scraper just to get any flour off the side of the bowl. And there is a bit of loose flour at the bottom that's not incorporated. I'm just gonna scrape it free, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to incorporate it at all. There's enough moisture in this dough that the yeast and the water will work their magic. Next, I'm gonna cover it up with a bit of cling film because I do want all of that moisture to just stay trapped inside the bowl. And I'm gonna put it into my microwave. You could also put it into your oven with the light on. Hey Google, set a two hour and 30 minute timer. Two hours and 30 minutes, and we're starting now. While the dough is rising, I can show you the five day meal plan that I came up with. I did make a meal planning video a little while ago, maybe over a year ago, my method hasn't really changed that much. I never planned for an entire week. That seems like too long a period of time for me, but anywhere from three to five days, I think is really helpful for me, especially now with Mahi. So after making the grid in my notebook, I put down the olive loaf and some soup for that very evening. And then I started to fill in the meals that I knew I wanted to make, but not in any particular order. 
I wanted to make a shepherd's pie and I knew that I wanted to eat it over two days, like for lunch over the course of two days. It has really helped me to make larger meals that we can eat more than once. And in that case, what I do is I usually use my correction tape and enlarge the square to show that I'm eating it over the course of two days. I also need that whiteout because I make a ridiculous number of mistakes when planning, but I don't like to write in pencil. So here I'm also adding a halloumi and quinoa salad with some grilled veggies, a honey sumac dressing. I didn't invent that, I actually found it in a cookbook. The day before I went to the grocery, I opened up this Canadian Living Vegetarian Cookbook that I consult from time to time for inspiration and found three different meals that I hadn't made before but which I wanted to try this week. You know, being in lockdown, in quarantine, whatever it's called at this point can be frustrating. Sometimes I get into a rut with my cooking, so it helps for me to look at a cookbook and get some inspiration. Then I go to my favorite app in my phone, look at the weekly flyers, and see what's on sale. If you aren't leaving cold cups of tea around the house, are you even parenting correctly? <laughs> So at this point, I am drawing out the meal plan, but I've already done my grocery shopping and I've done it according to the recipes that I'm gonna be trying, plus if there were any items that I needed to replace in my pantry or any of my vegetable staples. Now some of the items that you're seeing here I already have on my channel, so I'll be sure to link them. For example, that munglet and the tokla. There are a couple of spots that I'm just gonna phone it in, as they say. Lunch on that day was food from outside, so I just wrote Bahar Kakana, which means outside food. And then Wednesday evening, I know they're gonna be leftovers, so I'm pretty sure we can just scrounge up whatever's left in the fridge and eat that for dinner. And at this point in time, it's a good idea to check on the dough for our olive loaf and see how it's coming along. It's probably time to preheat the oven. Hey Google, how much left on the timer? 28 minutes and 46 seconds remaining. I'm gonna be baking this in my Dutch oven. If you don't have a Dutch oven, you really just need a pot with a lid that creates a good seal. This pot is gonna go into your oven while it's preheating and it's gonna create steam inside the pot when you bake your bread. That's gonna create a nice crust. So here I am taking my dough out of the microwave Let's take a look. It appears to have risen very beautifully. Watching an innumerable number of bread baking videos on YouTube convinced me that I could make an artisanal loaf at home. So here you're gonna see me try my best to work this dough into something that resembles what they call an artisan bread loaf. I'm using this scraper that I got online for like $7 to try and work or fold my dough into a boule, like a little ball. Now, the top of my loaf, which is actually on the bottom right now, that's on the floured surface, I want that to be nice and smooth and tight, so I'm pulling the edges of the dough and folding them over, trying to create these multiple seals, which are actually going to be the bottom of my loaf. I'm doing this as many times as the dough will allow me, there will come a point at which, if you're attempting this as well, you really won't be able to fold anymore. An expert would obviously be able to take this much further than I could, but you know, I'm someone at the relative start of my bread baking journey, so this is as far as I felt comfortable going. And at this point, I'm gonna flip over my loaf. Now that's the top side. It's not as tight as it could be. I don't have as much surface tension as I should probably, but for someone who's not a professional, I was pretty happy with the outcome. So now I'm transferring it onto a parchment paper, just using the same scraper, and I'm trying to, you know, jiggle it into the middle and trying, still trying to sort of perfect that shape, get as round as I possibly could. I'm making a few cuts into the dough. I'm using what's called a grignette in French. I don't even know what the English word for it is. From what I understand, it gives the air somewhere to go in the few minutes that it might puff up before you put it into the oven and then also in the baking process. I tried to make the cuts as attractive as possible. 
I'm just covering this up while I wait for my oven to finish preheating. It takes forever. And then as soon as I hear that ding on the oven and I know that it's ready, it's time to remove the Dutch oven and put the loaf, parchment paper and all, into the Dutch oven and it needs to bake in the actual oven for 30 minutes at 450 degrees. After 30 minutes, you can see that the bread is coming along nicely, but it needs a little bit more color on that crust, so it goes back inside without the lid this time for 10 to 12 minutes. Now when you finally extract it, it's a good idea to just let it sit on a cooling rack for 10 minutes or so while you gush at the sheer beauty of the loaf that you have created. Okay, this is a little irregular, but oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's so lovely. I think I am really pleased with the mm. rise. I love the it's, it's attractive. It certainly was attractive, and I am a fan of crusty bread, and I'm happy to say that this was crusty. I mean, listen to that crunch. I still cannot believe that I made something like this in my condo oven. Please give this video a like, subscribe to this humble channel, and I'll see you next week with who knows what at this point.